Hello learners. In this lecture, we will see how the compaction of a concrete has to be done. So the process of consolidating concrete mix after placing it in position is called as compaction of a concrete. We already seen that, right? Whenever we place the concrete, after that, we try to make use of the needle vibrator so that the proper compaction is going to happen. If proper compaction happens, what is going to happen? The voids are reduced. If voids are reduced, what are going to happen? The density of a concrete increases. And if the density of my concrete increases, then obviously the strength of my concrete is going to increase, right? So this is a uh, basic fund of doing the compaction. The objective of compaction is to remove the air from the concrete and give maximum density to the, to the concrete. Presence of more air voids will reduce the strength, has already seen. It also ensures an intimate contact between the concrete and the surface of the reinforcing steel and other embedded parts of the structure. During the process of compaction, it is important to note, note that, that the reinforcement should not be disturbed and form should not be damaged or displaced. Right. Again, it's the same thing. When you try to make use of a needle vibrator, uh, we should not use it for a longer period of time. And also wherever we have the reinforcement, we'll not make, we have to make sure that um, the needle vibrator is not placed exactly on that. So that what is going to happen, the vibration is created on the reinforcement bar. Right. As far as possible, try to place the needle vibrator in between the reinforcement. So that is a better way of practicing. Yeah. So next is if the compaction is not uniform, the concrete becomes porous for a very obvious reason due to the more voids and non homogeneous and it, it's going to attain the less strength. So this was all about the compaction of the concrete. Now coming to some objectives. So objective of compaction, you can try to go through this. Again, I'm not going to explain this. It's for the very same reason what I've explained, but they try to add a few more points. That's it. Point to remember by compacting the concrete. Again, the same thing they have written it here. The main thing is that the air voids reduce the strength of the concrete for every 1% of the entra entrapped air. For every 1% of the entrapped air, the strength falls somewhere in between 5 to 7%, right? So if you have more voids, then more what is going to happen? Strength is going to come down. So that is what they have represented it in terms of percentage here. Right. Yeah. So now coming to the important part, that is the method of compaction of the concrete. So we have a hand compaction and then we have mechanical compaction. So under the hand compaction, what, what is hand compaction all about? The process of ramming the concrete manually is called as hand compaction. Hand compaction is used for ordinary and unimportant structures, right? So we'll try to see where exactly the application of hand compaction is going to come. This method is extremely useful for thin section such as slabs and for members with congested reinforcement. Workability should be decided in such a way that the chances of honeycombing should be minimum, right? What exactly do you mean by this point? Because since we are going with a hand compaction, that means it will not be able to go to a greater depth, right? Let us say this is a footing, let us consider, right? So it has more depth. Now, with the hand compaction, what will happen? It will not be able to put a great pressure. As a result of that, it will not be able to fill all the voids it has. So that is why workability should be decided. If your workability is good, then what will happen? Concrete will flow on its own. As a result of that, the voids will get filled. And whenever you try to do the hand compaction, that much effort is enough, right? That much effort is enough to fill those voids what you have. But if your concrete itself is not workable, if, you, if your concrete is harsh, then what will happen? There will be more voids. And over that, since the compaction is being done by the hand, very little effort will go. As a result of that, more voids will remain there. So that is why workability is a very important factor when you are going for the hand compaction. Yeah. Now further, hand compaction is divided in three ways. The first is called as rodding. The second one is called as ramming. The third one is called as tamping. So we'll see them one by one. Yeah. So to begin with, we'll see what is rotting. So this is called as rotting. So in this, what we do, we make use of a 16 mm diameter rod. You can see here, which is a two meter long steel rod to pack the concrete between the reinforcement, sharp corners and the edges. The thickness of layers for rotting should be in between 150 to 200 mm. So this is usually for the cylinder. If you work, uh, if you have seen the concrete lab and all there, we try to cast the uh, cylinder and all right for our testing in that case we make use of this rod and especially if you see a very you know um, those uh, construction which are of not great importance and all then usually people try to make use of this rod and with the help of this they are going to do the compaction of that 
but these things we usually we use, use when we are going for a very inferior kind of works right we can make use of the rotting technique the second one is the about the ramming so in the ramming what we do it is generally used for compaction on the ground in plain concrete it is not used in rcc or for upper floors for compacting dry concrete the surface is rammed with a heavy flat bottom rammer until a thin film of a mortar or a paste appears to the surface showing that the voids of the aggregate have been filled so you can see it here no these are a kind of a rammers what we have even for the normal soil compaction even then also we make use of this rammer and especially for the pcc that is for plain cement concrete if when you do the excavation let us say this is my foundation what i have we already seen the first layer what we put no that is called as pcc which will be usually 75 to 100 mm thickness so in that case we are going for pcc which doesn't have reinforcement only plain cement concrete will be there in that case you can make use of this rammer so that the compaction is going to happen why because the thickness is only 100 mm and this rammer is capable of applying that pressure so that the compaction will happen for throughout the 100 mm thickness so in that case we go with the rammer otherwise normally we for rcc we don't make use of the ramming but for the soil compaction and all we go with the ramming right so this was all about the ramming activity and the last one what we have now uh, you can see it here also right see here i think they have placed a concrete and maybe to apply the force what they have done they have put a, a kind of a layer here and over that they are putting the pressure right this also can be done yeah so last one what we have is a tamping so what is this tamping it is a method in which the top surface is beaten by wooden cross beam of section 100 mm by 100 mm both compaction and leveling are achieved simultaneously it is mainly used for roof slabs and road pavement see here i think they are putting some a kind of a road pavement and all what they have done this is that beam what is speaking of which is 100 mm by 100 mm right so this is 100 mm and this is also 100 mm let the thickness be let since it's a steel let us say 6 to 8 mm thickness you will be getting so here you are doing the compaction along with the compaction there is a leveling also you can see everywhere it is leveled so this is called as tamping activity especially for the road construction and even for the slabs also we try to make use of this type of uh, compaction called as tamping ha huh, you can see it here as well right see here they have placed a concrete and now they already done the compaction and now they are going to do a leveling both is achieved simultaneously both is both are achieved here right again this is the beam what you have yeah so this was all about the hand compaction in the next lecture we'll try to see how the mechanical compaction is done what all instrument we try to use for the mechanical compaction so we'll see you back in the next lecture thank you